This is Tools of the Podcast Trade, where you can learn about the tools and resources you can use to start and grow your podcast. Tune in each week as we talk about the help you need to remove the mystery from podcasting so you can become a successful podcaster that can reach your audience where they are. My guest today is Brian Fife. Welcome, Brian. Hello. Thank you. Awesome. All right. So thank you for joining me and Tools of the Podcast Trade. Um, before we begin, can you tell us who Brian Fife is? Oh, good question. So Brian Fife is an entrepreneur, a writer, um, a uh, lover of music and uh, and uh, language. I'm uh, uh, essentially um, an entrepreneur focusing on building a more egalitarian internet and connecting people and local services better because I believe that uh, the internet wasn't designed for local services. It's great for blogs. It's great for even uh, products, but uh, it's kind of uh, put uh, the local business in a bind and uh, I'm searching for uh, ways to help solve that and better connect uh, the local service providers to the retail services to ultimately connect the customer better. Oh, okay. That sounds interesting. So you're making, so the internet opens a whole new opportunities for everyone, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to allow us to see that local businesses have that opportunity as well. Is that right? Yeah. You know, to me, Yelp, Google My Business, Facebook Business, these are, um, not much different than the yellow pages were 20 years ago. And I, I'm, I may be dating myself by, by pointing out the yellow pages because they've become extinct. But in essence, the structure of it is not that different. And when it comes down to a service business, it's often not always the customer making the decision. It's the customer needing guidance from uh, the experts to understand what it is they need for everything from your retail services, like, hey, if I'm a mas- I'm looking for a massage therapist, I'm probably looking for a specific type of massage therapist because I have a unique body of my own with its own issues, and uh, and I'm all about you know trying to find a way to better connect those services. It's it's uh, it really comes down to we spend a lot of time searching on the internet for things. And, uh, and we spend a lot of time recommending and referring our friends on the internet, but the only ones making any sort of money off of that is, uh, is these major billion dollar corporations when really it's our intellectual property that they're, uh, they're capitalizing on. And, uh, and to me, that's a shame, um, that we have not yet created a way for the public, the populace, the humans of this world, the non, uh, you know, the, the, the corporate, yeah, the non-corporate entities to be able to actually make money on, uh, on their referrals, their recommendations, and actually infuse the money into the community, not just into corporate entities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see where you're going with this because I have tried to use Yelp and, uh, the operative word there is try. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> it just seemed like you get churned as a consumer. You could just get churned yeah. in the system. Yeah. Yeah. You ask for something and you get 43 options. <laughs> And yeah, then you're spent, none of which work. Yeah, right? and, you, and then now you've got more work to do. You got to make calls to find yeah. out, hey, are you at my rate? Are you at, available yeah. at my time? Do you offer the service that I'm looking for specifically? You know, my, yeah. for example, my wife works for an Italian restaurant. Anybody who's ever been to an Italian restaurant may think pizza, but they are actually a pasta business. You know, they're a pasta based mm-hmm. Italian. So if you were to go there expecting, and she said this, this happens because someone goes on their Yelp and sees they have good reviews and that, um, uh, they're, you know, they're highly rated and, uh, and you know, their pictures look very, you know, pretty and they've got nice looking food and everything like that, but they don't go too deep. And all of a sudden they think, well, Italian, okay, well call and go, go right there. And they say, okay, I'd like the pizza. And they have to be like, I'm sorry. We don't have yeah, pizza. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so even your retail services, which are also product, sometimes product oriented, because you know they're looking to 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 better, they're looking to connect with the right audience. 
it's it's all about cutting down on that time uh, for you as a customer to find the right business and really cutting down on the energy expelled by the businesses to help them qualify who the right customers are. Because if you're looking for pizza, you're not the right customer for a pasta-based Italian restaurant. You're not the right customer right. for a massage therapist who perhaps works on, uh, you know, just deep tissue when all you need is a Swedish massage, you know? And, and, and I think there's variables on, on every kind of service to customer connection that aren't being factored into the, uh, way that, uh, you know, yep, Facebook, Google, my business, they're selling product, but product is not service. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, now that we've, um, established that what we have doesn't work for the consumer and obviously if it's not working for the consumer, it's not going to work for the business. So what is it that you have to offer that would work better to make the connection sure. from customer sure. to business? Sure. So I'm a big believer in power partnerships. It's uh, my, my initial business model starting uh, in 2013 was, uh, was as a, uh, as a content and uh, um, content producer. And I myself am a writer, as I said. And so I believe in, uh, in, in, in finding power partners to come together. And when I started doing that, it was, it was kind of an un, unheard of, like there weren't a lot of other people doing what I was doing. And and as I went and worked with local businesses, I, I felt like, um, I felt like there was a missing piece. And so I started to kind of, my background initially has also been in sales. I've been in some form of sales since I was a, you know, knocking on doors, asking people if I could mow their lawn at 12 years old, just to make money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or, or uh, I'm from Indiana or uh, shovel their driveway in the winter. <laughs> mm-hmm, and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, um, you know, I, I, I've always seen that there is a sales process, um, in, uh, in place, but they're not necessarily, um, equal across you, you, I worked for a fortune 5,000, uh, um, company who we, I developed their, uh, lead generation business development team from at that time when I started three people to when I left, they had well over 30 people that I was managing and, uh, and their job was to qualify the customers for the sale, right. To build Mm -hmm, up the mm -hmm. connection point before the salesperson actually even spoke to them so that they already had those kind of key, the salesperson already had those key pieces of information so that they could cater to the customer's needs. And to me, it felt like that was like a missing, (laughs) we were missing that opportunity for, for retail, for business services, for the, for the, 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 the non-corporate entities that don't have business development, they don't have that capability. And so we've been over the last two years in partnership with Preferred Networking, which is a, a great community that I've been a part of for the past two years. And uh, Colleen Valadez, who leads that group, um, we have been looking to build that more egalitarian way for businesses to be referred by the customers that love them. Uh, and then those customers to earn passive revenue opportunities through their referral, as well as we're building a way for the consumer to refer other customers and the businesses to refer other customer, their customers to other power partners, essentially creating a way in which the uh, business and customer relationship can be a truly about qualifying, having that kind of uh, line between where the customer meets the salesperson. Because when you when you close that gap, where the qualified information is uh, available to both sides, they're able to see that they can meet and find a better uh, opportunity in that customer and and uh, and vendor relationship but it's to me i think a key point in evolving uh, how we um find our services because in my so in local links connects our model is that the customer finds the service they're looking for they provide their budget based on a suggested retail amount uh, that our vendors provide us so say our vendors say you know our minimum starts at x and our our average hourly is y we collect all that information from the vendors on our platform and then provide a range of pricing options for the customer who chooses that service their budget the timeline they're looking to get that service completed and 
the uh, goals that they may have for that service. And then we send that out to all the vendors that are on our platform who then opt in and say, yes, that's a good customer for me, providing any additional follow-up information that the customer may need to help make that decision. And then we provide the first and top two options that match in price and goals for the customer to choose from, rather than them have to go call 43 options to find out if you are the right price, if you're the right um, you know, service for them. And, uh, and essentially creating that, as I said, kind of bridging that gap between the vendor and the customer so that the established baseline information is already there. And it's not about necessarily even sales at that time. It's more about uh, determining if the relationship is right, much like dating, right? You may find mm-hmm, someone who mm-hmm. meets how attractive that you want and meets, you know, what you're mm-hmm. looking for in X, Y, and Z, but that relationship has to build and form and create. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I want to essentially be that bridge between, uh, the customer and vendor that, uh, helps them to, um, kind of break down that line between, uh, sales and really focus on, uh, you know, finding that right relationship because that's what most service industry really is. It's about finding a good relationship with your vendor and customers that ultimately nurture the needs of all. Right, right. Yeah, I can relate to that having an insurance and real estate background. Bye bye yeah. referral yeah. is like gold, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I really like that. And um, it's the missing piece, I think, uh, that will eliminate a lot of cons- um, confusion mm-hmm. for people who shop and especially when you're shopping online. So yeah. yeah, thank you. That, that sounds really awesome. Yeah. Well, the big thing too, we're doing, so the way we're, we're starting this is by power partnerships, as I mentioned. So we're actually partnering mm-hmm. with hotels and vacation rentals, uh, in the mm-hmm. South Bay. This is our launching point, our pilot program, uh, with the goal of, cause, uh, I live in Hermosa beach, uh, which is outside of Los Angeles and, uh, and it's a huge, tourist destination. Uh, it's, it's mostly, mostly the service industry here, uh, retail services and obviously business services who work with those retails. And so what we are doing is partnering with those hotels and vacation rentals to create a, um, a uh, revenue source for them, but through their referrals, as I, as I mentioned earlier, and then also partnering with business networking groups, chambers of commerce and other business groups to essentially help build both sides. Cause you know, we kind of live in that two sided, uh, our, our customer and our vendor are both customers in yeah. this sense. And so through our partnerships with the hotels, we're able to connect where the retail guests and uh, through the vacation rentals, where the retail guests are actually staying and providing what is something pretty standard that has been around for decades, uh, in fact, 100 100 plus years now in concierge, but we're revising it in kind of a new model called the local guide uh, service. So local links where everybody can be a local link. Our goal is to create a capability to be a noun and a verb. You're a local link. I need to, how do you need to find something? A local link, you know, (laughs) get a local link. All of that is all about creating ways that it's, it's about a referral. So when that referral comes from the hotel to the guests or the vacation rental to their guest and saying, Hey, we're a local link to the community to help you find the services because John and Jane Q public may be coming to Hermosa beach or Manhattan beach or Redondo beach and not be familiar with all of the businesses and any vacation. I think we can all say is better suited when you have a local there to give you kind of the inside track. And that's really where our kind of our power partnership model works is in partnering up with the hotels and the vacation rentals on the retail side to connect to the businesses who we've worked with through our business connections with like preferred networking, who have then recommended the businesses that they love in the community. You get that locals, what locals love getting recommended to the people coming to the area and those people coming to the area, having a real connection because we're uh we're we're establishing both a digital and human customer service uh connection where they'll actually have a concierge or a local guide there to kind of clarify what it is they need and then after we evaluate that we send it out to the businesses those businesses now get to actually clarify what the customer wants from them ultimately then as i said earlier connecting them so it really is and and then along the way the 
businesses like the hotels and the vacation rentals add passive revenue opportunities so that they're actually both earning off of their referrals, but also driving economy locally. Need a way to jumpstart your podcast? Do you ever need some traction? You know, sometimes it's not easy starting your own business and a podcast may be the first thing that appears in your mind when you want to really get your word out there on your business, on whatever idea you're trying to build on. But starting a podcast requires a lot of resources, time, and effort. Now, with the Podcubator Accelerator Pro, this could help you. Now, this is a mentoring program that helps new and aspiring podcasters launch and grow their podcast. So what are you waiting for? Because 90% of podcasters fail after three episodes. Do you know why? Because they don't have the guidance and support. So this is highly recommended that you try the Podcubator Accelerator Pro. Because you get one-on-one mentoring with a professional podcaster. You get monthly coaching sessions. You get exclusive access to online courses and tutorials and even a private community of podcasters for networking and support. So what are you waiting for? Because you need to start your podcasting journey today. Hi, this is Jen. I'm really excited about Podcubator Accelerator Pro. So if you're interested, click the link below and book a one-on-one call with me, or you can fill out the application form to see if you're a great fit. So don't pod fade. Get a mentor. Right, right. Wow. Okay. All right. So, um, <laughs> since this is a podcast about podcasting, yes, and I'm hearing, I'm hearing monetization. You know, yeah. it's <laughs> it's one of those buzzwords yeah. for podcasters. Yeah. How can what you do, um, benefit podcasters, or how does it involve podcasts? Well, so we actually host a, pa- a podcast called Local Links Connects as well. Uh, and we interview okay. business owners uh, and uh, and also our power partners. Um, our goal is about uh, creating, um, I'm a firm believer in conversation. And, and so I believe that podcasts are a part of the connection process because they're about creating mm-hmm. a conversation. What's if anything, yeah. a conversation is just another touch point in the uh, in the connection. And so our goal is to really work as a member of our community, uh, working with the community members to give them a voice. And so mm-hmm. we we host uh, our own podcast that you can find on uh, on all the podcast channels called Local Links Connects uh, or Local Links uh, Local Links to Local Businesses. It's changed recently. I'm not sure, <laughs> but needless to say, if you look up Local Links on Spotify or Apple, you'll find it. Um, and uh, and ultimately, we believe that the podcast is an avenue to further. Uh, connect that business community, connect that service community, and then also to just to build the interest of the communities that we're working in, you know, and be able to Mm -hmm. highlight what is awesome about Hermosa, what is awesome about Manhattan Beach, and what is awesome about all of the areas that we ultimately want to grow into and create that that, um, uh, kind of multi-channel connection process. I'm a firm believer in the la- in language, right? I, I love mm-hmm. my degree in college was in English creative writing. And, uh, and with us, we're all about, you know, creating a connection. And I think uh, if anything, if you go back to the sales process, it's all about, mm-hmm. you know, a touch point. And, uh, and we believe the podcast can be an additional touch point for highlighting the community that we're working with, whether it be the businesses or the adventure or the things that are most mm-hmm. what make that place great. Our podcast is an opportunity to additionally uh, explain why the community that so-and-so is visiting or the community that someone is new to is great and what they can do. So we focus on highlighting our power partners, such as the hotels and vacation rentals or the businesses that we're on or simply the things that are going on in the community that uh, that people need to know about. And so you can find us on our podcast, Local Links Connects, uh, pretty much on every uh, platform out there. And it's all about just spreading the word about the businesses that people love because that's what makes most often the times that we visit someplace great because we have a local that gave us the inside track on what's awesome to do in the area. And so that's where for us, podcasting is a huge tool. 
to make uh, our our connections better, our customers uh, understand where they're visiting, our vendors have a voice and give them that voice to the community. Right, right. It's a great way for the local businesses to market themselves. Exactly. Sure. And, and, you know, yeah. the key thing here is that so many of so much of the Internet has become a local business 20 years ago had their job to do and like the newspaper and and yellow pages. Now a local business has to be an SEO. They have to be a graphic designer. They have to be a social <laughs> yeah. media maven. They have to be a videographer, a video editor. Mm-hmm. I mean, you name it. And I don't necessarily feel that's helpful to them. I think in some ways we have, we have, uh, hindered the sales process because we've mandated people that are great chefs or, uh, or who are, uh, great massage therapists or who are great, um, at whatever it is they do, they mm-hmm. have to separate their mind. They have to, you know, divide their time, take their focus away from the energy that they put into their product or service and, yes. um, and become these 10 other, uh, you know, digitally mandated things. And as, as much as I love podcasting and I love talking, it's a process to edit and Mm. to put it out there and to promote it. That's a whole nother job for another business that should just be focusing on doing what they do best. And so it's my belief in some, something like this, where you give voice to someone that may need and not have the tools at their disposal to be able to produce a podcast, but you get Mm -hmm. someone like yourself who can provide them that voice or us who can provide them that voice. That is where power partnership is a a key aspect that I think we as a society need to grow and not require it of the experts. We should allow experts to be experts in what they do and have other people come in and provide uh, an avenue for them to, uh, to showcase what they're experts at and not have to also become an expert in that podcast or videography or whatever else it is. Yeah. 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 I understand. I get that. Okay. Uh, what is Brian grateful for today? Um, I'm grateful for my wife and my family. And, um, I have a, a, a massive support network that has been, uh, there for me over the last, you know, almost 40 years. Um, I'm, uh, I'm grateful for music and creativity today. I, 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 every day I get up and, and, and get the chance to be a creative human being. And that's the goal I've had since I was a child is just to be creative. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing. And how can we get in touch with you? So you can find us on all of our channels. Uh, it's usually either my local links or my underscore local links. Uh, we're on Instagram and, uh, LinkedIn would be our two biggest channels. Um, and, uh, YouTube, uh, local links is on YouTube as well. And we're looking to grow that, um, as well as go to our website, locallinks.online. Okay. All right. And we'll put those links in the show notes. Anything else? Um, Jennifer, can you tell me something? What, what, what are you grateful today? (laughs) I'm actually grateful to be in New York today. I've been away for a while. I'm hanging out with a friend of mine, a former coworker, and I'm grateful to be able to, you know, backtrack where I was a year ago and just hang out with my pal. So That's yeah, awesome. I'm grateful for that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I'm uh, in July. I'm going to be able to have a, uh, a, uh, uh, um, during COVID, we were supposed to have a, a college roommates uh, get together. All of my college roommates hadn't been in the same room in 15 years at the time. Now it's going to be 17 years, but we're finally getting that chance yeah. in July. And I'm, I'm, I'm with you, like the chance to get back with people that you maybe haven't seen in a while. And, uh, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a huge missing piece. Plus I'm ready to travel. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 You got to travel. It's just not right to be sitting one place for too long. No, I'm a firm and, believer and, in travel. Yeah. It needs, we need yeah. to be moving around. It's, it's a, it three dimensionalizes us. It gives us understanding of people that we, when you meet someone new, you get the chance to understand who they are 
George Carlin has a has. A, I just recently watched a, a, the special on HBO Max that uh, the two parter, and he talks about how um, people individually. When you meet people individually, you get to you you see how awesome they are. When we get into groups, there's sometimes problems, but when you yeah. get to meet people individually, is when you get to see who they are. And travel mm-hmm. gives you that ability to to meet and and get to understand people from different areas of the world and and three dimensionalize them as human beings and uh and once you've three dimensionalized someone it's it's better for you because you then have an understanding of of how similar you may be or how your differences make you alike and uh and yeah. and and it's um going back to writing they're no longer a they're no longer a tertiary character in your life they're they're someone with value and you need to understand and you then understand and can feel a connection mm-hmm. it's beautiful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's like us meeting yeah. today you're in new york i'm in los angeles we're <laughs> we're 3000 <laughs> miles apart but we're we're getting yeah. to know each other that's beautiful yeah, and if you can't travel, podcasting is the best, next best thing. Right? <laughs> Talking to people around the world is amazing. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Just awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Brian Five, for coming and talking to me today. Sorry about the technical stuff, no but, um, you know, we're talking. Yeah. So this is <laughs> hey. awesome. Yeah. The fact is, what is it? <laughs> It, we, we we get we get sometimes fed up with with the technology when it doesn't work, but we also have to remember it's like holy crap, we just talked to someone three thousand miles away on a video chat. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for free, <laughs> relatively. Yeah, for free. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Jennifer. It was really nice talking to you today as well. Yep, absolutely awesome. Got questions about podcasting? Do you find yourself struggling with the tools and strategies that you know will help you launch and grow your show? Why not join the New West Podcasters Club where you can get your questions answered by me or one of our guest experts? The link to our next meeting is below. Sign up today and don't let confusion about podcasting stop you from owning your genius. Whether you're an individual or a nonprofit, the New West Podcasters Club is where podcasters come for answers. Link below for our next meeting.